Hi and welcome back for a third episode of Growing Sweet Annie from Seeds or Sweet Wormwood. It's growing very fast. It's developing a canopy that's enveloping everything down at the bottom in darkness. So you can hardly see what's going down there at the bottom. Can't imagine that any of those plants that are still alive down there are doing well whether they're sweet wormwood plants or California goldenrod plants. So we're seeing a lot of a new foliage, new leaf primordia growth. But at the bottom things are sort of matted down. Um, I expected that by, you know, foliage getting weighed down, stems getting weighed down, that, you know, if it's just uh, lying on the soil wet, it probably won't do well. And that's exactly what's happened. So I'm pulling up these backup California goldenrod plants. The one that I transplanted, the biggest one, to a separate pot. It's doing really well. You can see it briefly over there in the background. So I'll, I know this is from a different series, but I just wanted to show you what the roots look like. These aren't established. They're far and away from being rhizomes. So it just looks like a wild weed, and that's pretty much what it is around here. So I'm going to spend a minute to pull out whatever I can find, although it's uh, not much anymore. I think I pulled out most of the sweet anti plants last time. Anything that's still remaining in there under this canopy is not a threat. You can see some of the lower, um, well, I wouldn't say branches, but uh, some of the lower stems are dying. So it's day 99, and this thing just won't stop growing. I'm running out of room up here, and I'm considering a move to somewhere else. That and the passion fruit vine are obscuring a lot of sunlight and just taking up a lot of room. So things still look very healthy. Uh, no real complaints here, so I'm trying to decide what to do, and I think I'm going to be moving it down to an uh, old spot on this balcony that I used to have all my plants at. But for the moment, it's you know it's getting lots of sunlight every day, and it's just uh, growing really well. So I don't think I need to change all that much. I'm starting to require more and more water. So I used to have all my plants down here before I got those tables and they did pretty well. Um, now they probably wouldn't do as well because the tables and all the plants and foliage on top will block out a significant portion of the sunlight. So as you can see it's just getting bigger and bigger. This thing's actually getting a little hard to navigate around and uh, each one of these nodes you just have all this uh, backup foliage that's ready to sprout in case something should happen or I to trim and clip everything. So it's day 107. Like I said before, it looks overall very healthy except for some dead foliage down low. So for the time being, I don't really have to do that much. I decided at some point, it was probably around this point in the series along with my other plants to start using tap water, especially for this and my passion fruit vine just because they use way too much water. I mean, the leaves on here are very small compared to the passion fruit vine, but as you can see, there's just so much, so much surface area that um, evaporation is very considerable. This is an annual weed. You know, it's not in it for the long haul. It just does a one and done for the year. So as long as you have flow through, you can flush through the excess minerals, but None of that's really my concern for uh, this one and done plant growing series. You know, sometime in the middle or the end of the year, this is going to be done. I mean, look how big this thing is. And it has an interesting shadow from the reflection in the sun. One thing that's also interesting is I noticed uh, the branches, well, the stems on the side of the sliding door um, get that reflected light and they actually grow longer. So I have to keep moving it further and further away from the glass. It's day 114. And it's getting hard to move around this thing. Um, at one point there was this spider that tried to take up residence. It didn't spin a web. I think it was some kind of large spider, a jumping spider. It didn't really seem like a jumping spider either because those are typically small. Um, but this thing is sort of like a, maybe a, a temperate zone Christmas tree. You know, it just grows out in all directions. It smells pretty nice too. Never forget the smell. 
See, I just squeeze by to avoid bending these uh, side growths too much. And it's not as full as a Christmas tree, but, you know, it's the same general shape. You can see the reflection. It's up to my chest. And so far, it's just using up more and more water. And it seems like every time I water um, and let some runoff collect in the watering tray, you know, the next day or two, I'll check that watering tray and it'll be bone dry again so this thing is really thirsty and I had some episodes well I shouldn't say episodes uh, but just time periods of a few days here and there where all the foliage would start drooping and that the plant would look like it was missing a lot of mass but if I watered like this you know it takes quite a while to empty the whole three liters of capacity of a cold tap water like that um, but yeah, I'd do that once or twice and everything would just uh, perk up again. So it's day 121. It's time to trim dead foliage at the bottom and fertilize. This thing is huge. As you just saw the uh, growths facing the sliding door are actually longer. So I think I'll spin this thing around afterwards. But let me just show you. There's a, a lot of dead foliage. Um, I'm encountering similar problems with my passion fruit vine. And I think the answer is very simple. I need more macronutrients, micronutrients. So I'm going to crush up two multivitamin pills, kinds that I normally eat, and just leave them on the surface. That way, every time I water, uh, lots of calcium and micronutrients will percolate down there and soak into the soil and be absorbed by the root system. Normally, I'd only do one, but... You know, this thing's on a short timetable and it looks like it needs help badly right now. You can see all the, you know, graying, uh, yellowing, dying foliage. Essentially, I think it's recycling nutrients from the lower branches and trying to produce a more growth up top. But, you know, it's on a limited budget of uh, certain nutrients. So it can't do very well beyond this point unless I fertilize. This is a miracle Grow Singles Pack. Has these blue crystals inside it's essentially going to provide the three macronutrients that uh, most plants need for growth and then you know you shouldn't just let it crystallize and sit there or stay as crystals uh, first I'm going to wash off my hands there's always the concern that you have fertilizer that's too concentrated sitting in one spot or sitting on foliage and that would cause burns but I think I'm going to trim away most of that stuff anyway, so I'll just keep showering like this. And obviously I'm not going to show all of it, otherwise that would add uh, 10 minutes to the whole video. But yeah, just a pair of clippers and have a go at it like this. Um, sometimes a little bit of that perfectionist side of me kicks in and then, you know, if there's just 30% or 20% gray on one branch, I just want to get rid of the whole thing so I started clipping away I got a little uh, clip happy here and I think that'll really do wonders um, I won't have all these things brushing my legs as I walk by and I might even consider clipping the stuff at the top at some point but I want this thing to have a lot of time to recover so as you can see after a lot more trimming fertilized I look forward to a lot of explosive growth in the next few days and weeks and these uh, branches should really fill out although I'm um, thinking about trimming the um, you know just the outside growth just because they're getting too um, lateral and that inhibits my movement on this balcony so all that stuff you see down there it's a uh, artificial leaf litter it's going to decay and lose all its mass soon enough. In my passion fruit pot, all that, you know, all those clippings and leaves, they're basically gone. I mean, it's amazing. They didn't blow off and end up somewhere else on the balcony floor to be vacuumed up later. They, they just disappeared, disintegrated. It's almost like that never happened. So in two or three weeks or maybe a month at the most, I expect all this to you know lose its green and just wither away and uh, provide extra moisture trapping insulation for the plant this could very well be the fastest growing plant I've ever had and displayed on my YouTube channel so thanks for watching 
and come back for an episode four later on.